Okay, I want to cover another one of the commandments today, and this is another one of those short phrase ones. And this is, you must not commit adultery. So let's, let's think about this for a second, right? The act itself is condemned. There is no justification under any circumstances for either party to justify extramarital sex. It is not to be done, and when it is done, it is sin, and it causes damage to all parties involved, including extended family and even at times friends, right? We think about the effect that this has on children you know, within, within the marriage, right? The husband and wife have children, one of the spouses is, is unfaithful. How does this now affect the children? This is a sin that rolls downhill and winds up hitting a lot of people. You know, this is a sin. It was a bad sin. It was, it was considered and talked about as being wrong long before we get the Ten Commandments. Going back into the book of Genesis, this is talked about. And now there were different punishments within the Old Testament for adultery, um, and for what we would distinguish from premarital sex. Each one is wrong. Each one is sin. Premarital sex is sin. Adultery is sin. But the consequences were different under the thinking of God in the Old Testament. And I still think today the consequences might be different, but they are both equally sin. Now, the New Testament clearly condemns adultery. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery. And then it goes on to list a, a, a lot of other different types of sins. But adultery is number one. The act is condemned. But interestingly enough, with Jesus, not just the act itself. Jesus went even further, right? He talks about murder, which we actually spoke about yesterday. He talks about murder and even mentions that to hate someone in your heart is to commit a form of murder. He also does this with this idea of adultery. Jesus talks about this, the, the heart of this commandment. You shouldn't look on a woman with lust because when you do that, you've committed adultery in your heart. You may not have the, the opportunity to actually commit the physical sin, but you commit the mental sin in your mind. And we are innocent just because we don't have the opportunity to sin the, right, the way we really want to. Our thought life can be sin as well. So not only should we make sure we are protecting our marriages by not committing a physical act of adultery, we need to strive to not be lustful in our thoughts and in where we let our eyes roam. So it's both things happening right there in front of us that, uh, that I think really gives us the totality of this commandment. The Old Testament is stressing the act, and in the New Testament, Jesus dealing with the heart and the mind. So you put those two things together, we get a clear picture of what God's calling us to. See you later.